liturgical year, we are going to bless this wreath with which we also inaugurate the season of Advent. Its lights remind us that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Its green color signifies life and hope. The Advent wreath is therefore a symbol of the fact that light and life triumph over darkness and death because the Son of God has become man and has given us true life. The weekly lighting of the four candles of the wreath ought to signify our gradual preparation for receiving the light of Christmas. On this today, the first Sunday of Advent, we bless the wreath and Alexis Geary will light his first candle. Let us pray. The earth, Lord, rejoices in these days, and your church filled with joy before your Son, the Lord, and, and your church filled with joy before your Son, the Lord, that as his coming as splendorous light to illuminate those of us who lie in the darkness of ignorance, pain, and sin. Full of hope in your coming, your people have prepared this wreath and have now adorned it with lights. Now that we are going to begin the time of preparation for the coming of your Son, we ask you, Lord, that while you increase every week the splendor of this wreath with new lights, you illumine us with splendor, so that we can be light to this world of darkness. He who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, to resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that, gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <coughs>
how you should conduct yourself to please God. As you are conducting yourself, you do so even more. For you know what instructions we have given you through the Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. It's the humble whom he guides, 
It's the humble whom he teaches, and as scripture says to us today, it's the humble who will receive his justice. So how do we become more humble? Well, there's many ways that we can become more humble. First of all, by changing our thinking, by consciously making decisions to put the needs of others before our own needs. Now, we have a Catholic practice that if we avail of ourselves of it regularly, really helps us grow in humility. There's nothing more humbling, or not much more humbling, than telling somebody else their sins. So I'm here, I'm talking about the sacrament of reconciliation, that is to say, the sacrament of penance or of confession. This sacrament is a principal part of our Advent preparation as Catholics. And I encourage all of you to um, come to confession, come to the sacrament of reconciliation at some point during these four weeks of Advent. Now, I or another priest are always available every Saturday in that confessional right behind the organ um, for to hear confessions from 4 to 4.45 every Saturday. Also, I'm available by appointment if somebody wants to call and make an appointment during the week. Uh, also, um, I want to announce that on Tuesday, December 14th at 7 p.m., here at Our Lady of Sorrows, we'll be having our pastorate Advent service, where Father Gonzalo, myself, and likely another priest will be here to listen to confessions. We give the sacrament of reconciliation. Now, when we confess ourselves, we not only grow in humility, but we receive grace from the Lord. That is supernatural help from heaven that's meant to help us walk more closely in the ways of the Lord, and to make us more available, more ready for the Lord to guide us and show us His ways. One of the translations of today's responsorial psalm says that the friendship of the Lord is with those who fear Him. I'm sure I have mentioned this before in other comments, but the real meaning of fear of the Lord is not being scared of God, but rather having the law of God, being so aware of God's love for us that we would never ever want to offend him or sin against him or do something that would ever hurt the Lord. Jesus exhorts us in the gospel today, beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of the daily life. And that they catch you by surprise like a trap. Jesus is warning us that we always need to be prepared. We don't know when he's coming back again. But once he comes back again, or once we die, whichever comes first, we have to be ready. Then it's too late to turn to the Lord. We have the time to turn to God is right here and right now. My brothers and sisters, Jesus warns us about a few things. He says, don't be busy carousing and getting drunk. Now, this is the same Lord who took wine and turned it into his precious blood. This is the same Lord who took wine and performed his first miracle by changing water into wine at the wedding feast of Cana. My brothers and sisters, Jesus was not a teetotaler. He drank wine in moderation. He's not telling us that we have to avoid alcohol, but he's telling us to not get drunk. And he and St. Paul warn us in other places that drunkenness can actually keep us out of the kingdom of heaven. So if we struggle, if we have a problem with alcohol, we need to take ownership of it. And the same is true of any other kind of drug or anything else that's addictive, like gambling or pornography, anything that's addictive. We need to take ownership of it and get the help and seek the help that we need in order to live sober lives so that we treat one another better, especially our family members, but most importantly, so that our souls are ready for when the Lord calls us home or when he comes back again. And he also says, don't let the anxieties of daily life 
catch you off guard. And so oftentimes we get so busy, we get so wrapped up with all of the things that stress us out, with all of the things that occupy our time, that we neglect daily prayer, we don't read scripture, we don't really concentrate on the Lord, we don't pray. And when that happens, then we're not ready to meet our Lord. My brothers and sisters, all of these things, humility, the confession of our sins, especially in the sacrament of reconciliation, and avoiding things like drunkenness and other different <coughs> behavior, and not allowing the stresses and busyness and the anxieties of life get in the way. All of these things are ways in which we prepare ourselves for Jesus' second coming. All of these things are things that we should be working on during the Advent season. And Jesus also warns us in today's Gospel that there will be signs and warnings of his second coming. Things like um, signs in the sky and with the sun and the moon and the stars. Nations will be in anguish and the roaring of the seas and these hurricanes and things of that nature and rumors of war and so forth. Well, that stuff sounds a lot like today. But in reality, you know, we have had periods, various periods over the last 2,000 years where these things have been happening too. And the reason Jesus gives these things as warning to us, these signs as warning to us, is because we always need to be prepared. Again, these things happen at peaks and valleys all the time in nature. And his message for us is that we always need to be ready to meet him. The so the message that Jesus is trying to say is always be prepared, just like the Boy Scouts, always be prepared. So my brothers and sisters, let's, during this Advent season, this week especially, let's take stock of our lives. Let's examine our consciences, examine our lives, and be honest with ourselves and maybe even write down the ways that we need to grow, the ways that we need to focus more on Christ and start treating others and putting our faith as the number one priority. And let's ask for grace each and every day to help us become more and more like Jesus so that that day will catch us prepared and not catch us unprepared like when he comes as a thief in the night. God bless you and God bless you.
that the church will spread the gospel, responding to the signs of the times. Lord, set us free. That civic leaders will work for peace and harmony between the nations and peoples. Lord, set us free.
goodness we have received of the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below, gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design he formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great goodness in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called for the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word that my soul shall be healed. and singing our communion hymn number 825, now in the span.
This coming Saturday, the 4th of December, at 1 in the afternoon, we will be having an altar server training here in the church. This is for anybody who wants to become an altar server, boy or girl, as long as they have had their first communion and regularly attend Mass. Also, it's a refresher for experienced altar servers. And I am welcoming adult altar servers, too. If there's any adult that wants to be an altar server, you are welcome and encouraged to come to this training. Again, it's this Saturday at 1 p.m. Join us for a day of radical generosity this Giving Tuesday, which is this coming Tuesday, the 30th. Every electronic gift you make in advance that day to the Archdiocese will be returned to our parish. So there are cards in the pews for more information, and I encourage you to give electronically on Giving Tuesday because it will all come back here. Please continue to bring in non-perishable food items or contribute to the poor box so that we can purchase fresh food items for our Christmas food baskets. These go to, to needy families in our community. Also, we have the angel trees set up around the church so that you can purchase children's gifts for needy families. And also, we have silent seats for helpers in the church in all gifts, they should be wrapped with the tag on the outside that you got from the tree. They should be um, brought back before the 12th of December. Our newly formed pastor at Respect Life Committee has a meeting on November 30th at Our Lady of Perpetual Health. This is to, um, if you have an interest in prayerfully standing up against the culture of death that pervades our society, please come out at 7 p.m. on the 30th at Our Lady of Perpetual Health, and meetings will rotate between the two parishes. Also, on Wednesday the 1st, from 8 to 5, we have adoration here. Now, we will not be having it Tuesday, but we will be having it Wednesday, from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And this is while the Supreme Court hears oral arguments regarding the Mississippi law that prohibits most abortions. So we're having special holy hours in both parishes while the Supreme Court is deciding this case. Also, flyers are also in the bulletin for our festival of music, adult Christmas party, and children's Christmas party. And sign-up sheets are there for the parties as well. And I have some, some good news and some sad news. Uh, the good news is that Deacon Tim Michaels, who uh, as you probably know as a parishioner, a longtime parishioner of this parish, he became a deacon four years ago and has been serving at Elizabeth Ann Seton in Crofton. He is being transferred to our pastorate, both here at Our Lady of Perpetual Health, on July, or excuse me, on January 1st. So please welcome him when he arrives. But our deacon Herman, uh, he moved last summer. He and his wife had an opportunity to move into his wife's childhood home outside of Baltimore. He's been commuting back and forth ever since the summer, and he's been offered a, a position at St. Margaret's in Bel Air, so he will be moving on on January 1st. So please, in the next month, please say your goodbyes and thank you to Deacon Herman for all his hard work here. And I'm also very sad to announce that this has been to Sos last weekend with us as our parish organist and um, choir accompanist. And I wish you best wishes and well and success. And we'll always have a home here. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Christ our Lord, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace for a kind God with God. Please join me in our closing.